How did two Bangladeshi villages manage to avoid disaster when a cyclone struck? Stay with me, Elan Kelman, to find out in this latest episode of The Science of Disasters. Bangladesh commonly experiences cyclones, with major cyclone disasters in 1970, 1985, 1991, 2007, and 2009. The earlier tragedies led to top-down work by the government to reduce cyclone impacts, including the construction of a series of coastal embankments. When cyclone warnings are issued, they reach people swiftly through various media, and the people understand what they mean and where they must evacuate to, mostly a series of robust shelters. Not everything can be achieved at the national level, though. From 2013 to 2016, two Bangladeshi coastal villages participated in a vulnerability reduction program funded and implemented by the Red Cross and Red Crescent. The focus was avoiding disaster impact by integrating a variety of actions into day-to-day -day life. People were paid from the program to construct better roads, build latrines and water wells, and explore ways of diversifying their assets and income sources. They received training for developing businesses and accessing markets. Some of the villagers now use their back gardens to grow vegetables to sell, while others make clothes or rear cattle for meat and milk. Small shops have sprung up. Dealing with disasters is also tackled directly. Fishers received safety equipment and residents learned first aid and search and rescue techniques. The poorest households, those without land, or with marginalized members such as people with disabilities, they were prioritized for receiving cash grants. Because of this program, villagers sought ways to protect their lives, assets, and livelihoods during storms. But without a hazard, can we really claim success? And would we really know that vulnerability has been tackled and reduced? For this project, we need not speculate. A cyclone made landfall on Bangladesh's south coast on the 21st of May 2016, just three weeks after the project officially ended. Those living in the two villages received warnings, accepted them and evacuated, with no casualties reported. They soon returned home to find that their new initiatives had withstood the cyclone's forces. Their new fresh water supply and latrines remained functional, and they easily resumed most of their livelihoods. One embankment had broken, flooding some of their agricultural land with salt water. Because the project had diversified livelihoods, many of the villagers were able to switch to fishing. While they worked the land to help it recover from salt contamination and return it to cultivation, the cyclone became an inconvenience, not a disaster, due to human choices. Coastal Bangladesh is said to be at the front line of climate change impacts, especially with respect to sea level rise. The villages and land around them are expected to face higher waves and storm surges as the next generation comes of age. Even more concerning is fresh water. Salt water infiltrating the wells could wreck communities without a full water treatment system. The villagers face other hazards, including earthquakes, tsunamis, and river flooding. The day may yet come when the encroaching sea cannot be stopped or when external forces change living conditions so that village life cannot be sustained. Migration, starting livelihoods anew, and village reconstruction could become essential. But at this point, having built up capabilities and having reduced vulnerabilities over years, at least the people will be making their own decisions, using their own resources, from a position of strength, of strength of having learned and succeeded, rather than from weakness, destitution, ignorance, and hopelessness. No matter what the future might bring, the work done with and by the villagers will have helped them toward a brighter future with fewer disasters. Human choices can reduce vulnerabilities, build self-reliance, and widen the resources and choices available. So how do we go about reducing our vulnerability to disasters? Join me, Elan Kelman, in the next episode of The Science of Disasters. You may like to try out more of the fascinating series in our science channel. Find out how technology can increase your chances of survival in a disaster in our series on wearables. Could a wearable save your life? Subscribe now. Hit the bell button to receive notifications when new episodes are available.